Now to a story that really pits public safety versus individual survival. The individuals in this case are sex offenders. Many of them just plain flat cannot find a place to live because communities are coming together, they're banning them even after they have done their time for the crime. New York Times reports that neighborhoods across the country are now installing these pocket parks, I mean teeny tiny plots of land forcing out sex offenders because in many states registered sex offenders are not allowed to live within a certain distance of any given park. The Times says that this L.A. City Councilman, Joe Bushinkio, has already installed one tiny park and has plans for two more for the sole purpose of pushing out a cluster of sex offenders in those areas. Let me bring back in our Hot Topics panel and Paula Bloom. I am hearing you are fired up over this. The, the issue is this is perfectly legal is it morally right? So I'm of two minds. I'm a psychologist, and there's research that talks about greater stability, having a home for people with sexual who have, were offenders are less likely to offend. When you have a lot to lose, you, that keeps you a little bit more in line. When there's no consequences, where you feel like you're homeless, you've got nothing to lose, your behavior is because. It, Sex offenders offend, not, they don't stop offending out of some moral thing. It's about consequences. Mm. But I'm also a mom. You are I've got a mom. two kids. With and the mom I, hat. Yeah, and I feel like, gosh, I would probably be one of those first people with the shovel, you know, going to help with the playground. Well, I'd send my husband. I'm not big on that. But, you know, with the playground. So here's the thing. We as human beings, we can look at what we, what's good for society. This might help society to keep people safer because they have some stability, the sex offenders. But when it comes to our kids, the visceral reaction of protecting our children, all of that research doesn't matter. It's really about, it's terrifying to think that our kids can get hurt. Lauren, it's, you're a mom. Would you send your husband or yourself shoveling <laughs> that, uh, that playground? I'd be, I'd be shoveling. <laughs> you would be shoveling. But, but here's, but, but here's the point. It is really hard to defend a convicted sex offender, right? But where are they going to go? This is like not in my backyard. This is like exactly. trying to find a place to put nuclear waste. You know, we got to do something with it. Right. You can't just leave it sitting around. You have got to put it somewhere. Okay, so then what does the solution become? And mm -hmm. I agree of two minds. I don't want them near my children's school. But there also is a thing called the National Alert Registry .com, which sends you a red alert every time a sex offender moves into your neighborhood in near your school. You can sign up for this. There are ways of tracking these. But offenders. still, beyond the red people. alerts in these right. in these neighborhoods, then on top of maybe a red alert, you have these you know playgrounds that are popping through, which means definitely, definitely these people can't move in. Let me jump in because you all are sort of making this one point. This is according to Janet Neely, a member of the California. California Sex Offender Management Board. This is from the Times. Quote, putting in parks doesn't just break up clusters. It makes it impossible for sex offenders to find housing in the whole city. It is counterproductive to public safety because when you have nothing to lose, you are much more likely to commit a crime when you are rebuilding your life. I mean, you see these tent cities, you all, that are, that are popping up, people living under bridges because they have nowhere else to go. That can't be a solution. What is? Exactly. Uh, Brooke, I, I think I think we need to go to one of these lesser populated areas. Like, look at Wyoming or Montana. Let's go somewhere that, that does not have the, the the huge numbers that some of these inner city have. And so, stop investing the money in the parks and maybe build a community to put these people in in, in lesser resident areas. So you're saying well, put them all together and send them to Wyoming? Basically, I mean, you've got to put them somewhere, but we've also got to protect the kids. You know, Paula makes great points. There's the yin and the yang with this. Yeah. Patrick, Brooke, Brooke, it, Brooke, Brooke it all, it, it really is about rehabilitation and prison. Uh, the, the fact that California is spending six million dollars on the pocket parks and the prison industrial complex audio. is a billion dollar business. Can we please enact some type of reformation for sex offenders when they're in prison so when they leave prison they're less likely to commit a sex offense and disturb and destroy a life in a community. It is a valid point, and it's something that's, good, that's an issue, uh, not just California, but uh, nationwide. Paula Bloom, Lauren Ashberg, John Murray, and Patrick Henry uh, Bass, thank you all so much. Hot Topics panel for this Monday. Now this.